All right. Chris, there's a lot going on in the legal world, and everybody has decided that the route that college football is taking is is the wrong direction. Sports Illustrated has an article up that says, SEC and Pac-12 to pitch Senate on NIL legislation and athletes' employment status. Basically, uh, because they could not get it done with the NCAA, you know, Mark Emmert went and talked to the House of Congress and all this other stuff, and he couldn't get anything done. And during the coaches, not coaches meetings, but the, uh, the big admin meetings in Scottsdale this week, here is what the article says from Ross Dellinger. Uh, amid unrest within college sports, two Power Five commissioners are traveling to the nation's capital to lobby lawmakers for the creation of federal legislation to regulate name, image, and likeness, a U.S. Senate aide told Sports Illustrated on Wednesday. It says, on Thursday, which would be today, Pac-12 Commissioner George Klaufkoff and SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey will meet with U.S. Senators on Capitol Hill to fight for a congressional mandate to regulate what has evolved into the uh, NCAA's latest festering problem. Sankey and Klaufkoff, two of the industry's most influential leaders, which might be a bit strong for Klaufkoff. I don't know that he's the most influential right now, but either way. Uh, it says they are teaming up to encourage lawmakers to pass an NIL, uh, NIL statute. They are also expected to seek senators' help in preventing what they believe is another potential issue looming for college sports, employment status for college athletes. Uh, we've only been at this for 10 months now, and it has already become such an issue that they are going back to the senators, back to legislators, and trying to get something done because they know that if the NCAA tries to block anything when it comes to NIL, which I'll, I'll talk a little bit more here in just a minute um, about the NCAA threatening some of these collectives, I, they're not going to be able to do anything because the, the Supreme Court during the Austin case last year basically told them, if y'all try and put any kind of restrictions on this, on what these kids can make, we are going to crush you. Like, that was the opinion from Brett Kavanaugh, the uh, the Supreme Court justice. What are your thoughts on what's going on here? Why would Sankey and Klyovkov want to get involved in this? Uh, because their uh, school presidents are upset and are yelling and screaming, and or their athletic directors are upset and they're yelling and screaming, and or the major coaches. Uh, involved or upset, and they're yelling and screaming. I did, see, I did see this. Front Office Sports said that uh, it was being pushed heavily by Nick Saban and Kirby Smart, which immediately made me think of the conversation you and I had on the show at some point last year when all this stuff was going on, and Nick Saban was like, "Is this? do we want this? Do we want boosters getting involved like this? Do we want all this stuff going on? And everybody took that as a warning, and I took it more as, Nick Saban doesn't want boosters involved with his program. Yep. And I think that might be what we're looking at. Like, hey, can what can we do to get these guys out of the way? Right? Like, I think that's what's happening. But I, it, it's so weird to see. And I, I understand Sankey would do that for his coaches. I'm curious about Klyovkov. Like, he's brand new at this. One, what kind of influence is he going to have? And two, uh. Why, who over in the Pac-12 would he be interested in doing this for? Like, wouldn't uh, he be better everybody, served? Everybody, everybody not named USC. And and that might be that might be the the thing there. That's, yeah, that's the issue. He's he's got he's got twelve schools that he has to answer to right now, and two of them are thrilled about this, and the other ten are absolute rip shit pissed. Yeah, I think you're probably right there. Uh, I could not That's imagine why. Stanford getting listen, involved with this. Everybody like, says, oh, Saban, Saban tried to warn everybody about going fast. And look, he perfected it. He mastered it. No, he didn't master anything. He gets more talent than everybody. Yes. he gets So So now, so he just stopped getting big, slow, strong guys and started getting really fast athletic guys. Yes. But he gets more talent than everybody else. He doesn't like this, and Kirby doesn't like this, because now, for the first time ever, one of them two doesn't have the number one recruiting class in the nation. And why is it? Because no matter how much money they throw at people, they ain't getting what A&M's getting. Because until A&M was able to bring it above board, A&M obviously didn't have the system to pay these kids under the table the way Alabama and Georgia were. 
This yeah. is not magic, guys. This is not this is not magic. This is not something. They're not wizards, okay? They're, they're just not. All right. Nobody. Everybody can say all they want. Look at how Nick Saban puts guys in the NFL. Okay. Look at how Kirby puts guys in the NFL. Until this draft, Kirby hadn't been the greatest at putting guys in the NFL. We've had three different coaches at LSU, and every one of them put guys in the NFL. All right. I actually, well, we don't I, get I, those types of recruiting class. I tweeted about that. By the way, did you see that? Uh, no. They they were talking about uh, the number of NFL players that have come out in the last what, 10 years or whatever it was, and LSU was right up there. It was Alabama, Ohio State, whoever, yeah. and LSU. And I said... Yeah. We, we, we just put 10, number two out of this draft, 10 players yes. in the league in the last two years were below 500. Yes. And that's that's what I was saying. Okay. Is anybody that doesn't think that Brian Kelly is going to kill it at LSU is just fooling yeah. themselves. No, like it's and just... Brian <laughs> Kelly knew that also. And anybody who's, that, who's, who's upset about that at, 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 at you know... Uh, Notre Dame and wants to pop shots of well he'll just he'll just get just destroyed by everybody he was getting destroyed by when he played him in the playoffs yeah he didn't have this kind of talent in the playoffs nope he so did not anyway neither here nor there the, the, Nick and them are mad because the rules are changing on them to balance out uh, uh, you know the talent to spread it around would you rather be fourth fiddle at Alabama or Georgia? Or would you rather be king dingling somewhere else? Yeah. This is going to give opportunities to kids to go to schools like Cincinnati or go to Oklahoma State. Because if you're the best player at Oklahoma State, you're going to get a lot of money. You yes. might be the 12th best player at Alabama. So yeah. now you're not going to get the depth you're used to getting. And so let's, you're just not. Let's let's keep it on. Uh, let's keep it on nil. I might have put the cart before the horse here. Uh, part of the okay. reason why I think that that Sankey and Klyovkov are going to the Senate is because of this other article from Dellinger from the day before. It says Task Force yeah, Two Big uh, Money. That's the article I actually saw. Yeah, this one. Uh, the Task Force Two Big Money Boosters NIL Sanctions could be coming, and basically it says college leaders are gearing up to issue a warning to hundreds of wealthy boosters who are using NIL ventures to involve themselves in recruiting. Um, basically, they're going after these big collectives, right? What we've got at Miami with John Ruiz and that bunch, what we've got at Texas A&M, what Texas has put together, what it, everybody has been putting together collectives, right? We, we see all this. Yeah. Um, but John Ruiz came in, and I don't know that it was in the SEC, or in the, uh, excuse me, the SI article, but John Ruiz, who is the billionaire booster down at Miami, he came out and said, Hey, uh, I dare you to do something about this. Uh, like we were just talking about, uh, he he knows he would win in court, like because of yeah. what has happened. He said, uh, yeah. John Ruiz said, uh, we feel our platform is the only one in the country that truly would be resilient to any attack by the NCAA because we do have a quid pro quo. The payments are made electronically to them every two weeks. It's a pretty well oiled machine. Um, it it the whole thing is just. Like now that this thing has been opened, how do you put the as as Pat Forty says? How do you put the toothpaste back in the tube? I don't think you can. You can't. You can't. You can't. And and this is what I love. This is what I love. Okay, worthless pieces of shit like Mark Emmer does nothing for half a decade or over a decade to fix this problem when it's been looming all this time, and now that it's here. And he has to do something about it. He can't just shoo it under the rug anymore because those damn poor college kids won't just go the fuck away. Okay? Yeah. Now that he has to do something, he's he's acting like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do. No, you don't. You don't know what to do. Don't go to Congress and ask them to fix this. Do you see how bad Congress fucks up everything they touch? Oh, yeah. They can't fix this either. All right? You got a bunch of people that are really bad at problem solving who are getting paid gazillions of dollars to problem solve and they don't know what they're doing yeah no you're 100 percent right they don't know how to they don't know how, listen i love you know wessel talked about uh and maybe it was pat 40 uh talked about um uh, uh oh god the byu coach Holy yeah kalani shit. sataki yeah uh coach sataki talked about coach sataki saying you know, I ain't never seen 18-year-old kids with this much money before. Are we sure this is good for them? Man, they're going to piss it all away and go be broke. So it's better for them to have nothing and just be broke all the time 
than for you to give them money and them to fuck it off. That's I, I think I think the idea of learning from your mistakes uh, probably better than just never having the opportunity to do anything with it, right? Um, yeah, these guys are going to make money. Yes, right. Yes, and that's offensive to a lot of people because they don't like these kids making a lot of money because when they were young, they didn't have a lot of money. Well, yeah, the world is different now. Okay, Grandpa, moving on. Moving You're on. only getting paid a lot of money because. You're really good at coaching football. That's the only reason you're getting a lot of money. If you couldn't coach football, you'd be useless to society. Yes. Yes. Most of these coaches, less than useless. Darren Heitner said in this, by the way, he's a Florida-based sports attorney. He said, either you let everyone do it or you enforce the rule. In essence, what's happening or will happen is those who are willing to violate the rule will be rewarded if nothing is done about it. Don't have a rule if you're not willing to enforce it. This isn't a matter of them not being able to do something. But will it further open itself to more litigation? Uh, litigation it's probably going to lose. And and that's the whole point of this, right? They already this is know. What you and me talk about all the time. Though. Yeah. Like unenforceable rules it just enrage me. They yes. just enrage me. People people make up rules all the time. We should have this rule and we should have that law. And, okay, that sounds fantastic. How do you enforce it? Yes. What do you do? What do you do when they break it? We're going to have that conversation now about Tampa. All right. Every coach tampers. Every one of these schools tampers. What do you do when they break it? Do you just take them out back and shoot them? Like, what What are we going to do? Because <laughs> there's got to be, hang on, hang, you can't say you want this rule and then not have a plan or an idea for what to do when somebody breaks your rule. Yes. I know it's, I know it's surprising to these guys who have been in control their entire lives and nobody has ever, ever disobeyed them before. But somebody might disobey them. Somebody yes. might break their rule. Yeah. And then they got to figure out what that plan is. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.